Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sadie Simeon. I am a communications um, lead for Casper Micro Insurance. And welcome once again to Insurance Panther. Um, before we start, I'm just going to introduce our panelists to us. Um, first of all, I'd like to start with um, Anne. Anne, is, um, Anne Orago is the head of Affluent and Meteor Corporate Department of FBM First Asset Management Limited. Um, she, over the years, she has acquired a passion for advocacy in the area of personal finance and has been featured on various um, financial literacy focused television and radio programs. Right. She's also the head of SEC, um, that's the Securities and Exchange Commission Secretariat for the South Region Investor Education Forum. Um, so she's going to be one of our panelists talking today um, to us about, you know, financial, excuse me, personal finance and, you know, how you can basically ensure that you are on the right track. Um, our next panelist is Ayodili Williams. If you joined our last um, insurance banter, you remember Ayodili was one of our panelists also then. He currently leads claims and compliance team at Casper Micro Insurance. And um, he also has an extensive experience in insurance and research. Um, ideally, he's a seasoned technical strategist with over eight years experience in the insurance industry. Um, his career started off as the management trainee in Cornerstone Insurance, and then he grew consistently um, to where he is right now. Um, he's also a member of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. So both of them are going to basically be the one taking us through this session today. I am just going to be a host and just, you know, handling the session. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Before we continue, I just want everyone to know that this meeting is recorded just for um, the purpose of making it on demand for people who may not be able to join, or even you to you know, go back to if you need to have a look or listen back to what we talked about. This session is going to be very, very interactive. So please feel free to ask your questions in the comment section. Somebody would definitely respond to your questions, you know. Um, and um, we're also going to be, you know, throwing our polls as the session goes on, and it would be, you know, we would appreciate it if um, everybody, you know, participates in the poll, um, uh, as it will help us, you know, throughout this session. I believe that everybody is on this session because they have one or two things that they would like to learn about personal finance, and so let's just try to make it as interactive as possible. Okay, so now we have a poll that is going to come up now before we dive into what personal finance is. Um, if you would just take two seconds to just, you know, fill the poll and just let's have your feedback on it. Um, and it's going to take us um, into the session proper, but I just want to talk a little bit about what personal finance, what I feel personal finance is in my own experience. Um, you know, when people talk about personal finance, um, I, I, I try to think about what it means in general, and I would say that it's encompassing, but maybe not limited to things like budgeting, you know, um, banking, investments, your earnings. So basically, any way that you're able to make money or use your money to make more money for you, find a way to, you know, save more money, um, invest your money or pay um, your bills and all of that, everything. You know, compassing, you know, mix mix up um, what personal finance is. So think of it like this: if you're making money either via your business or maybe you're earning an income as a an employee, you know, in order to manage your money properly, what you need to think about is how do you you know create a personal finance strategy that would help you. Um, so I'm just going to open the floor for Anne, so she can take us into what exactly personal finance is. Hi, Anne. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sadie, I think you've done a fantastic job already um, because you, you basically explained what it is. Personal finance is every aspect that has to do with managing your money matters, so to speak. And so planning what you're going to do with your money, 
earning it, um, consolidating your funds, budgeting, spending, which is probably our favorite part of personal finance, saving and investing. That's um, all what personal finance is. Um, one thing I'd add to what um, Sadie said is um, the fact that sometimes we don't realize how correlated managing our personal finance is to achieving our dreams. I know now we have, especially in Nigeria, we have a lot of people that are very aspirational. They want to go to the moon and come back. Everyone has all sorts of goals and dreams. Um, and the truth is, most of those goals have a personal finance requirement to them. And so um, the sooner we are able to get into understanding and managing our personal finance well, the better and the more likely we are to be able to achieve all these amazing ideas that we dream of. Um, so back to you, Sophie. Thank you. I think you're muted. Uh Yes, thank you very much, Anne. Yeah. I was about to say I was going to ask you do you to add, but I think that you have done a great job of really expatiating and explaining what personal finance is. That even if I didn't understand, you know, what it was at the beginning, I get it now based on your um explanation. Um, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the key aspects of personal finance. Like um, Anne rightly said, it has a lot to do with a lot of things that include, you know, things like savings, things like your earning, your spending, you know, and all of it. But each of these aspects, you know, they have individual parts to play when it comes to personal finance. And I think that's the crux of the matter. That's the reason why we're even having this conversation. So people can understand the different aspects, you know, and especially that one missing aspect. So um, I'm going to open the floor for um, both our panelists to talk about, you know, personal finance, but maybe Anne can, you know, start from planning and just walk us through and then IODB can also help out. Okay, thanks. Um, so looking at the, Pessip, as we have named this in this case, um, it starts with the most important part, which is planning. And why planning is very important is because that is where you get your motivation from. Um, it's when you realize how important your goals are. And I'm sure if I take a poll here and say, everyone, please just type in the comments what one big goal you have as an having gone through all the hustle of Lagos traffic and everything that you go through every day just to ensure that you're able to earn some money, what is the one major thing or two or three that you want to achieve at the end of this? I know that people will be very passionate when we talk about that. And that's where planning starts, is with itemizing the things that are important to you that you believe that no matter what, you have to achieve this one, two, or three things. Then as soon as you've identified those, it's important to identify what do I need in terms of resources and to be able to meet this. And the resources could be cash or it could be skills. But the interesting thing is that even where you require skills, a lot of the time you have to pay for those skills. Um, luckily, where the time where a lot of the information you can get would only cost you your data charge because there's so much information on the internet that you can use to upskill yourself if you don't have to go for formal training. And so it's very important to plan what are the key things I want to achieve and then identify what resources um, do I need to be able to meet you know, these things that I'm planning for. Um, Ayodhiti, if I move on to earning, I don't know if you want to chip into that bit. Okay, so for the earnings part, uh, as we have planned to do some things in the future and we already have uh, goals that we intend to achieve, it is very important that we talk about the fact that to do those things, it demands money inflows income 
So there are different ways in which you can look at those incomes and earnings. So in, with regards to the earnings, you can start talking about the bonuses that you get at work. You can start talking about your salaries. You can talk about your pensions, even dividends that you get from the shares that you've bought. You can even talk about some of these hourly wages that you can get from um, the work that you do. And so this is actually one of the um, steps that we need to take. And it is also the first of its kind when you are talking about the financial roadmap to our personal finance that we are talking about here today. Thank you so much. Um, if I can just add, just in case we have some students here, because I know with the ASU strike, there are quite a few students that are available at this point in time. <laughs> So earnings can also be gifting that you get from family members and family friends. I, for instance, when I was in school, I didn't joke with my pocket money. It was, I had a budget. So when I get my pocket money, it was a major source of earnings to me. I would plan, okay, I'll put this percentage into getting that amazing outfit I want. I'd use this to get this book. And then this is the bit I'd use to enhance my provision. So earning is it, everything that Ayodhiti has said, and gifting as well, any sort of cash inflow you're getting is earnings for you. So don't think, oh, if this money was gifted to me, that means I have to spend everything on, you know, just entertaining myself. No, gifting can be a very important aspect of earning. So please, when we're thinking of our earnings, let's sit down and write out every single kind of income or cash inflows that we get. Then when we move to spending, which is my favorite part, I'm sure there are a lot of people on the same level. <laughs> spending is something that I am good at doing. <laughs> um, when it comes to spending, we have to think critically um, about how we go about this. And that's where budgeting comes in. And so if we remember what we said about planning, where you identify what is most important to you, please, it is critical that you first plan and provide for the most important things and then leave some more for the less important things. I'm not saying you should ignore any aspects of your spending. That's not realistic. If you're working hard, sometimes you need a break. You need to go out for drinks with friends or watch a movie or Netflix, whatever it is you know, that helps you to just calm down and refresh and reset. Um, so you do have to pro um, provide for that. But when you're spending and before you even spend, please, it's very important to think about what's my plan? What did I say? How much did I say I needed to achieve this one, two, three things? When you have planned for those, then you put in a plan for everything else, even for gifting. Some of us are very generous. Um, some of us even like to contribute towards some charity courses. Let everything be planned. Because if they are not planned, if you just do it, you know, impulsively, you won't be able to achieve the main, the most important goals that you have. So spending in itself is an art. And the truth is, if you plan it well, if you budget it well, you would actually get to enjoy spending your money. The worst thing that can happen is if you get your salary or your profit from your business or whatever in sort of income you have, and at the end of the day, you don't even remember what you spent your money on. Like, ah, my account is empty. What did I know? Then there's a problem. So please let's plan our spending well so that we can actually have fun with it. Moving on to savings, it's sort of like a mathematical equation. Earnings minus spending is your savings. So if you want to have savings, it's important that you check your earning. If you think you're not earning enough, then look for other ways to enhance it. There are lots of people with skills. I mean, now that there's YouTube, in, a lot of people can, can have YouTube channels and, and make money through that. There are people who can do different things. So try to think of how to monetize your gifts. Not, I'm not saying don't be generous. There are some things to do for free, but there are some gifts that people are willing to pay for. So find ways to monetize your gift if you need to do that to enhance your earning. But the important thing is that you always have to ensure that your earning surpasses your spending. It's so critical. 
because that's the only way you're going to get savings. As soon as you have savings, this is some extra money left behind. It's important to ensure that your money is not sleeping. You can't be hustling, walking, waking up early, going in traffic, and then your money is asleep as savings. It's important to look for means of investing those funds. It is so critical to ensure that you are investing the monies that you save. And now there are so many investment channels. When you're investing, one thing you have to remember is you have short-term needs. Every day you have to eat, right? You have to move around. If you have a car, it means buying fuel, servicing the car, mechanic issues, all of that. And if you don't, you have to pay for transportation to move around. So you have to plan for, when you're investing, you use short-term investment instruments for the monies that you need for your day-to-day, -day, this week, you know, at the end of the month, things I need to pay for, maybe your telephone subscription and all that. Then you have your medium-term goals. What are the things I need to do in the next two years? Maybe I want to do a master's. Maybe I want to start a business. Maybe I want to rent a house. Maybe I want to buy land. Maybe, you know, you have your sort of like medium term goals. And so you can then put those kind of monies in investments that are more medium term. And they tend to have higher returns. Things like bonds and their mutual funds is, a, is an excellent solution because they have short term, medium and long term mutual funds. And then you have your long term investing for things that you're not going to do for the next maybe five years. You could be just getting into university and you know that, look, I have this talent. I once I get out, I want to start a business. And so you should start putting monies towards that as well. So in planning, you have to plan towards the short, medium, and long term. So you know the kind of investment instruments that you put your money in. Um, moving on to protection, and I'm not going to talk a lot about protection because we have an expert here um, who will talk about it. But I'll just say that, you know, your plans, your ensuring that your earning and spending are balanced so you have savings and investing are fantastic. But if you don't protect yourself, you could go from hero to zero. Because if it's like, if you have a property and that's where you get your rent and make your money from, if you haven't protected that property and it burns down, it takes away the income, it puts you in, it digs a hole in your pocket. If it's your health, if you have a major health challenge and you haven't protected your health, you could spend everything you've put aside, liquidate all your investments to put in there. So if protection is an anchor. And so um, with just that introduction, I'll step back and hand over to IODD2 to you know, um, give some flesh to that point. Thank you. Right, thank you, Han. And so I uh, will just uh, take us back to the fact that uh, majority of us might be thinking, uh, but that should be the essence of me doing my savings, and my savings should actually take care of these uh, emergency funds that should take care of the accidents and emergencies that I might be experiencing while I am trying to achieve my long-term goal. Yeah, that's true. But you should also know that um, if we go by the 50, 30, 20 rule, uh, it will tell us that uh, the 20% of the earnings that we have may actually not be able to take care of some of the things that could happen to some of the investments that we've done. And then you will see that if we invest in um, property, real estate, we invest in um, um, automobile and uh, some other businesses that we tend to do, uh, we'll see that uh, there can be uh, an unforeseen accident or incident that could occur. For example, Anne mentioned the fact that if we have a property and it gets burned down, uh, it means you will have to get a fund to rebuild or to renovate. And uh, most times the savings that we have uh, that we have in bank or at hand may not be able to do that. And you also know that it's not going to be so wise of us uh, because there is uh, an incident. We now have to break the investments that we've done so that we can actually spend on that. That is why the key um, aspects of the personal finance is very important. And you cannot take out one 
because of the other. So what is advisable for everyone who is trying to manage his or her finances is that you take the aspect of a protection very important. And the aspect of protection that we can easily key into and, uh, and spend less is keying into insurance. We all have different kinds of insurances that we can uh, key into uh, considering uh, our situation in the society. So we have the life insurance, you have the health insurance, you have the rental insurance. Then uh, if we look at it, if you look at the health insurance that is taking care of your health, so we have instances whereby we will fall you and we need to go to the hospital. So you can imagine you entering into the hospital without having that protection of insurance. And then the hospital is telling you to pay 10,000 naira for consultation. What if you had paid 500 naira or 1,000 naira for an health insurance, and then you just need to enter into the hospital, get your treatment and go home without paying a dime. So that is being wise. That is you paying 1,000 instead of 10,000. That is protection. So what of the instance whereby you have your gadget with you, which all of us could easily relate to. You have your phone with you, you have your laptop with you, and uh, there is a damage or there is a loss to that laptop. You can imagine you having um, the opportunity to go and repair the damaged laptop or that the laptop is missing and you have to buy another one. You would prefer to have an insurance on that as a protection on the gadget so that when there is an incident, your insurance can actually take care of that. That is being wise. You can also talk about you having a vehicle you have, as your automobile and then you can say that for your automobile, maybe there is an incident or on the automobile. And instead of you bringing out money from your pocket to go and repair this automobile, your insurance can talk to that. So you are making these expenses and that should actually come under protection and it will not in any way affect your savings. So it also means that when you do not have these things, when it is time to spend because you do not have protection, is going to impact on your investment is going to impact on your savings and invariably just as we say that when you get your earnings you pay yourself first it's also going to impact on you paying yourself so for those of us that love to spend money on ourselves so you won't be able to spend that much because you have overlooked the uh, aspect of protection thank you so much Ayoti. that was very yeah, intuitive. Um, I think one thing Anne said that I picked on was um, talking about planning. You know, um, me personally, I everything that I'm doing concerning my finances, I plan everything to be smaller. You know, and I realized that what this does is, I mean, sometimes you might. And, you know but what it does is it gives you perspective so you can know you know where you need help or how you can you know or just so that we're not in overboard on whatever you're planning to spend um I have a couple um so a couple of people have asked some questions um and I I think Anne would like to take questions before we continue to see. So somebody says that, um, you know, in this situation and this economy that we are right now, that is it advisable to save your money in a you know, bank account? So is a bank account the best place to save in the region economy? So I don't know if you would like to answer that, and before we continue. Yes, yes, I definitely do. Interestingly, the inflation numbers came out um, about a week or two ago, and the inflation is up at about 20.5%, which means that, you know, whatever you bought at a certain price last year, at the same time, costs 20.5% higher. And leaving your money in, a, in your regular account um, means that you know you're basically just losing money while it's there. 
So my advice and my personal practice is that what I leave in my account is basically what I need transactionally if I need to do something over the next one week or so that's what I leave in my account everything else I invest and there are various investments that you can do short term like I said a typical example is a mutual fund which is open-ended it's practically like a savings account in the sense that you can put in any amount you want and take out a bit of that as you need it um, on a regular basis and you'll be paid within normally one to five days on the average. And so that way you can plan so that your money is not just sitting down and doing nothing. Such so that you know that at every point in time, the money that's just sitting in your account is the money that you actually need to use to spend within that period. If not, you're, you're just losing value, which isn't fair on you because most of us work hard for our money. And so you don't want to just sit down and lose value because you're not using your money, applying it in the right way that you should. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Anne. I think that was very. Would you advise that you know somebody should do forex, for instance, if somebody's trying to make some money, you know, some extra money and all of that, we are making more money in foreign exchange. Okay. So this is what I'd say about Forex trading. If you want to go into it, please be sure that you're skilled to do it because every kind of um, platform um, that has high potential return is exactly that is potential return, which means you could also lose money. And so if you go in without having the skill to handle Forex trading, you could get yourself so burnt. So if you are skilled in that, by all means, please do it. But if you're not, I'd say it's better to just invest in dollar-based investments so you continue to earn. And luckily we have quite a few of those in banks, um, I know for banks, they normally want you to have a very high amount before you can invest, but there are other alternatives like asset managers have dollar based mutual funds. And I know that those funds you can invest with um, for some $500, for some $1,000. So I'd say if you, if you are not skilled to do Forex trading, it's best to just invest in a product that you have experts managing so you don't lose money just because you're trying to keep your monies in dollars. There are very many ways to keep your monies in dollars without taking undue risk. So please be certain that you're skilled before you go into that. If you're not certain, then just place it in like the dollar-based mutual fund. And I know that there are some that are paying as high as 11% at the moment. And so, you know, your money would be working for you. And that's the benefit of investing here. Um, the interest rates abroad are not even as high as the ones you get in a lot of places in Nigeria. And so you can be here local and earn very decent returns on foreign currency. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Anne. I think that was very, um, very clear for the person that asked the question. Please, I'd like to say that I see some people are raising their hands because we will not be able to take a lot of that. You can just ask your question in the question and answer button. You just click down there. You could see a Q&A button. So you can ask your question there and I'll just do that. Um, someone says, um, okay, I think this one would go to IOD. Someone says, can I ensure my computer, my video cameras and still cameras and other production equipment um, and then he also follows that up with saying, should he insure them one by one or should he insure them collectively? So I think I really can take that question. Okay, so for your computer system, your video camera, this can be insured together as one. And um, you only need to reach out to a licensed insurance company 
So you can get that. You can go to the NICOM website. That's the naicom.gov.ng. So you are going to see the list of licensed insurance companies, and then you can reach out to any of them. And then insurance type that you are going to be uh, asked to do is going to be an all risk type of insurance. And if you want it, that's all, all risk type of insurance is going to give you leverage to be uh, on risk anywhere in Nigeria because insurance of this type are uh, jurisdiction based. So you are limited to the boundaries of Nigeria. So you can do that, but for those ones, that uh, have to do with a particular location. So for this, you can do a burglary and fire insurance. So that will only take care of the fact that there is a, a breaking into your shop or your office, or there is a fire damaging these equipments. So those kind of insurance can be done on these equipment. So you can do them together instead of one after the other. Thanks, it is frozen. All right, thank you so much, I for taking us through that. I think we'll just go on. Um, other questions, other questions will be answered as we're going on through the session. Um, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the strategy of personal finance. Um, so when I say personalized finance strategy, what I mean is that um, most people here would definitely have different things that they're doing, right? So most people are business owners, most people um, work for, you know, employees, or most people have multiple stream of incomes and all of that. So is it possible to create this POC, um, you know, personal finance strategy that would fit a particular you know, type of maybe business or a particular type of person, depending on if the person is a, a um, either a business owner or the person is a is an employee. So I don't know, Anne, if you'd like to take us through that. So you said the modes of investing for a business owner or an employee. Was that the question? Um. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, creating a sort of a book personal finance strategy in a sense where if somebody is a business owner, you know, they would definitely have a different strategy that they want to use compared to if somebody is an employee you know, or if somebody has multiple streams of income, you know, is that something that you think is possible for for people to create bespoke um, personal finance strategies that they can then follow? Okay, absolutely. Um, so moving on to the bespoke um, personal plan, which is what you're talking about, um, yeah. is really about identifying your own objective and your own peculiar situation and so um for business owners like in your example you're not going to you're not likely to earn monies in the same way as a salary earner unless your business is so structured that you can tell okay it's at the end of the month i get this bulk payment and so you're more likely to have some bulk payments at certain times and then there are other times that you don't and that is um that requires a lot of planning because where business owners um where business owners don't plan properly they find that in the dry periods they're struggling so it's very important to understand your own cycle and know that, okay, for instance, um, maybe I'm the owner of a, a crash. I know that at certain times, school fees are coming in. And so I'm going to take these funds and I'm going to invest them. I'm going to put a bit away for the long term because I expect to, maybe my goal is to expand beyond what I'm doing now. I'm going to take a bit and put in short-term investments like 
mutual funds, the short term ones, such that by next month, when I have to maybe pay suppliers or my teachers or whatever, I can do that. And so the idea is to first identify what your goal is and what kind of um, financing you need for that. And then secondly, to establish your earnings. When is it? How much? When is it bulky? When is it light? How can I invest it? What do I invest it in to ensure that I marry my objectives with my expenses? For people who are salary earners, it's a bit easier because the money sort of comes at a regular frequency. But the truth is, if you don't plan, you still end up getting broke because, you know, when your money just comes into your account, you could just be excited. I mean, there's always some sort of, I don't know, hype when you see, you know, you've been credited. And if you use that excitement to spend all of your money, two weeks into the month, you're broke. And then, you know, start borrowing towards the next salary. So in each case, whether you're a salary earner or whether you are a business owner, it's important to identify what are my goals? How much do I need for them? At what frequency do I need my, my cash flows? Then identify which is long, medium, and short term. And then my earnings, because that is the fuel for that. What is my earning? When does it come in? How can I match? Because most of the time, your expenses and your earnings don't necessarily match. So in between is where you're building the savings, investments, and what you put in your account. How can I match all of this so that I don't get broke on duly and I'm able to meet my goals? One of those goals being put aside some money for investing or for protection, for paying for my insurance and all. So in bespoke planning, you have to understand yourself. And what I say is try to write down a lot initially. This is my plan. This is what it will cost. This is what I need in the short, medium, and long term. This is my current earnings. This is how much I get from other sources, from gifting, from this and that, from previous investments. And this is, so you can then match, okay, so I'd invest this so that maybe the interest from my investment I'd be using for this everyday you know, expenses and all. It's important to identify your goal, your earnings, and your spending and plan a budget around it. Whether you're a business owner or you're a salary earner, it's very important to do that. And that is how to personalize for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, I, did, I don't know if you have anything that you'd like to add to that. I think Anne has done a really great job. Exactly, exactly. What, you know, how you can book. Okay, all right, great. Um, so I would say that for me personally, having um, you know, a sort of um personal finance strategy that is streamlined to yourself, basically because of maybe your earning power, um, maybe the kind of business you do, or um, you know, basically the type of finances that you deal with. I think it works perfectly because what works for one person might not necessarily work for another person so if there are ways that you can create strategies that are streamlined to you and then make it work for you because it's obviously probably not going to be perfect you know but then you work towards making it you know a perfect strategy that you can use um so the next thing we're going to be talking about is we're just going to be talking about what the missing piece of personal finance is um i know that this is the this is the reason why we were having this webinar because we wanted people to understand that you know most people when they think of personal finance they just think about savings and you know earnings and how they can make more money and all of that but at the end of the day they forget the most important thing which is finding ways to protect all of these assets that they've been able to you know gather for me um what having insurance has done for me or having protection to say is you know giving me sort of a rest of mind service right it allows me to you know protect the majority of my income if I'm unable to work, you know, I'll have something to fall back on, right? Um, it's it's basic. I feel like it's basically important because part of part of personal, you know, financial planning is to protect you, protect your loved ones, you know, protect the cost that's you know associated with everything that you're doing that has to do with finance. So I would just like I would do to you know expand on what protection is and why 
we say that protection is the missing slice in um, personal finance. All right, thank you, Sidi. Um, I will begin by saying that um, you will all agree with me that um, in life, we know that some things that we do not plan for, we certainly happen, whether now or in future. So while we have that at the back of our mind, it is proper that we protect ourselves against those occurrences because uh, we actually do not have control over them. So some of them are nature-based, while some of them are through our own doings or even through the wrongdoings of those who are our neighbors. So for everybody whom we meet every day have uh, a potential to actually pose one risk or the other on each and every one of us. So I would like to take us back to the fact that the earning aspect of the uh, personal finance is actually very important. So if we have a plan and uh, there is no earning, then definitely we cannot achieve those things that we have planned to achieve. We cannot do those spending that we intend to do. So when it comes to protection, like I mentioned earlier, insurance is usually the first go-to and the easiest thing that is close to us that we can pick to make use of. So it won't be out of place if the first thing we are going to be talking about here today is going to be us protecting our income. And when we are talking about protecting our income, it means we are trying to protect our job. We are trying to protect our salary, our employment. So we know that there are instances whereby the employer can just say, your services are no longer required, please go. At that point, the earnings are no longer going to be coming in. The spending that we want to do are no longer going to be possible. Even the savings that we intend to do are not going to be possible. We will not be able to do those investments that uh, we have planned to do. So it is important that we actually key in into one of this protection in terms of insurance, especially when it has to do with our job, when it has to do with our employment. There is job loss insurance. There is job loss insurance. We might be hearing it for the first time. It exists. People are getting paid. People are losing their job and they are not freaking out. People are losing their job and they are just laughing. You can imagine your employer telling you go home and you are just laughing. And your employer is saying it that uh, you are not angry, you are not sad, and you are still the same person that you used to be while you're on the job. That is what insurance can do to you. Insurance will give you that hope that there is still life after this job. And that is why it is important that you key in into a job loss insurance. Cassava Micro Insurance, I have a product that is called income protection. You can pick that up. For the income protection, it's going to tell you that if there is an involuntary termination of your job, that is your employer telling you to go, you can come for a claim. And that particular policy will pay you for a period of six months till you are able to get another job. So that is what that can do for you. It means when you have that kind of policy, that kind of insurance, you can continue to pay your bills. You can continue to buy food. You can continue to pay for your electricity bill. You can go out with your friends. You don't need to stay in house to say, I don't have job, I don't have money. So I, I cannot go out. That is what that part, so it's like you still receiving your salary. That is what that particular insurance will do for you. Another one that we can look at is the health insurance. We will see that the way hospitals are charging a lot of us these days, you will see that is affecting our pulse, is affecting our savings. You will see that when you, when you do the 50, 30, 20, and the 20% is for your uh, contingency fund, you will see that if it is time to go to the hospital, you can think about you having to do 20% of your salary, just calculate it, 20% of your salary every month. And then within six months or within one year, you have to go to the hospital four times. And each of these visits on, a, on an average, you are spending 15,000 or 20,000. 
at the end of the year, I am sure there might be no savings left for you. So these are why we are encouraging people to go for health insurance. Pay an HMO. Cassava Micro Insurance also have an health insurance product that you can plug into. And it is very cheap. It is very cheap. You can imagine you pay 1,000 Naira every month. That is a kind of policy that you can get for yourself. You can also compare with other products. You can also think about life insurance. That is protection. You can think about life insurance. Each and every one of us, we know that there is one thing or the other that we intend to achieve. For those who have kids, for those who have parents, who have a daily ones, there are different kinds of life products that you can do. We have people who have insurance as a, against the education of their children. We have people who have insurance against their own education themselves. We have people who save towards a particular goal in future. These are insurances that we can take up and then do. You see insurance plans that you can even do as savings that also gives you the avenue to have rights or benefits when it has to come with personal uh, individual. We, can, we have people who have insurance that have to do with accidents and disability. We have people who can be on their way to work and they are involved in an accident and that is all. They can no longer go to that daily work and you see them no leg, either there is no hand or they even have hands that is not uh, complete for them to do the work that they used to do. Those are the things that you can get from insurance, that insurance can do for you. So those products exist. So we can always key into one of them or the other. And then it is cheap to pay for insurance because by the time you get the benefit, I know majority will be like, ah, if I have been paying and I'm not getting the benefit, what happens? We have had people who have said that, and the moment they stop paying those insurance premiums, those are the time when those things they were trying to guide against usually happens. So it is advisable that we do that. For even for those who have their businesses, you can also cover your business against those eventualities. You can cover your business against fire because you can lose your capital, you can lose your goods. So you can have fire insurance against your shop have fire insurance against your office. So these are many more protections can be picked from any insurance company that of your choice. So let me stop here. Okay, thank you very much, um, Ayodile. We joke around, we say, we call him Professor Ayodile because when he starts, it's usually hard to, you know, <laughs> bring him back to us and he has basically done a great job of explaining what protection is when we talk about um, you know building a financial a personal finance strategy um a lot of things he said i think that we you know had plans to talk about but he has already explained you know some common types of insurance and you know why you need all of this insurance the income protection the health insurance the auto insurance i'm pretty sure a lot of us here have you know, if we drive cars, we have at least a third party auto insurance. So most people already understand that there is a need for this thing. Um, there's a popular saying that they usually say, say, make hay while the sun shines. Um, but I also like to say that, you know, if you have an umbrella, for instance, or if your hay is inside a house, when the rain falls, it's not going to disturb your hay. When the sun shines, it's not going to disturb your hay, right? So if you have something that protects you or, you know, covers you from issues that might rise up, because truthfully, life is very unpredictable and we can't, we can't stop bad things from happening, right? The, what we plan to do or what, what our idea is that when those bad things happen, you have something to fall back on and you don't just go flat because, you know, something bad And um, that's basically what um, is all about. And then um, for cassava ourselves, we are not, I'm sure most of you would have noticed that we are not your for everyone.
um, a lot of people might sometimes people feel like insurance is too expensive and so they can't afford to have insurance, you know. But the 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 thing is the thing is that at the end of the day, insurance is really not as expensive as most people, you know, would like to think. It's actually, you know, easy easily accessible and you know less the the amount that you're going to be paying is nothing when it comes to when you're talking about maybe your income or what the thing that you're planning to insure is costing and so that's the job of a micro insurance company which is what cassava is as a whole so technically we operate the same as your conventional insurance except that um, our insurance policies you know come at a very reduced cost right and it's basically just designed to make insurance affordable through providing um you know sort of specialized policies that cover specific assets um i don't know Ayoli, do you want to especially a little just a little on that okay okay so for micro insurance you'll see that um when you try to get an insurance policy from the conventional insurance guys the kind of document that they are going to give to you you might not be able to go through everything and you might not even be able to understand everything that has been written in this particular document. But for micro insurance, it's always very tiny. You can just slip it through and then you understand what is in the policy. It is very simple. There is no ambiguity in the words that are used. Even what is being covered are clearly stated and what is not covered are clearly stated there are no two meaning to whatever has been written into it you can imagine picking a two-page policy document from a micro insurance and picking a 50-page policy document from a conventional insurance so this differentiates us and another thing that you also get to yourself is that the fact that you don't have to pay for one year you don't have to pay for six months micro insurance make it easy for us to get insurance because you can pay every month you can pay every month. So that flexibility is there from the micro insurance end. Thank you. Thank you so much, IOD. Um, and I see you, you're trying to say something. I don't know if you'd like to add a little bit to what IOD has just said. Um, just to mention that it's, it's fantastic that micro insurance exists because it means that everyone can have their bespoke personal financial plan, even if, you know, your income is not humongous, you'd be able to have access at an affordable way, in an affordable way. And this all ties in, into, you know, what we started off with. When you plan, you want to achieve this, these are the assets, those are part of the resources you need. If you want your business to continue, you don't want to lose the assets halfway. And so you can use insurance to do that. And so in planning your finances, please, please, please ensure to plan the payments, your premiums, your insurance premiums, because it's an anchor to make sure that while you're going on your goal, you know, an unforeseen circumstance doesn't just come and bring, you know, everything you've worked hard for. So it was just interesting to me how everything ties back in to where we started from and how important, you know, insurance is as the anchor for everything that you planning thank you all right thank you so much and um so from my own experience i i realized that generally when people talk about personal finance they mostly just speak about generating income or building multiple streams of income how to create savings you know or how to spend wisely um but if you think about it you know finding ways to sort of protect all of your financial aspects or your assets basically the ones that you've been able to gather is a key part of developing a proper personal financial strategy. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, if something were to happen to your business or your income or whatever it is that is making you money, making you money or helping you to create some sort of wealth, you know, you want to know that you have a backup. You want to know that you are protected. That um, today, if you lose your job, you want to know that you have a way of sustaining yourself before you're able to find another job because a lot of us um, have you know dependents people that we care for people that we are 
you know, responsible for. And it wouldn't be nice for us not to be able to do all of those things if you, you know, say lose your job, for instance, or you have a, a health care. You know, somebody somebody told me one time that, you know, in Nigeria, it takes just one, you know, one very serious health issue to basically run you dry. But you realize that when you have insurance, when even the smallest one, you know, even when you 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 sometimes you say, oh, my insurance doesn't cover this fully, but it does cover some part. You know, it does cover some part. And then you what what this does is it subsidizes what you're supposed to pay. So imagine paying an insurance policy of say a thousand naira or two thousand naira monthly. Um, and then you go to the hospital and then you're still sick and they have to give you a bed space, they have to do a series of tests, they have to give you some drugs. If you were to pay out of pocket, you know how much you pay. We all know how much you know, hospitals cost and all of this. So I mean, if we can find a way, you know, finding ways to protect ourselves against these things that we know are eventually going to happen, you know, it's, it's it's always a great thing to think about. And that's why I think insurance is a really important part, um, you know, an important um, slice of the personal finance file. And one that I think personally that everyone should have. Um, I delay and I'm just going to get final words from you before we round up and take a few questions that I see people have put up here. Okay, so my parting words would be, please don't let your dream die. Ensure that you support it with a proper personal financial plan and back that up with insurance. You work too hard to not achieve your dreams. So let's make it happen. Thank you. Right, so I will, I will encourage you know, each and every one of us to ensure that we hold eye our touch and uh, make sure that for everything that we invest in, that uh, you don't go for high returns because for every high return, there's always a very high risk attached to it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I think somebody says that they would, okay, I think these are questions that I can take personally. Someone says they would like to, you know, register for Casava Health Insurance and, and then he's asking if his registration can cover both his family members. Um, so it's an individual plan, which means that when you subscribe for this plan, it's just covering you. If you would like to subscribe for your dependents, you know, you'd have to buy another plan for them. However, we understand that a lot of people would just like to buy one plan and then know that this plan covers both themselves, their spouse, and people are dependent on them. So we're obviously building stuff, something that, you know, that would ensure that people can buy one plan to cover themselves and their dependents. Well, for now, what we have is very subsidized, you know, um, health plans that you can buy for yourself and, you know, for your family. If you're, if you're buying, if you're buying for your wife or your two kids, you'd realize that at the end of the day, you're not spending a lot of money, you know. Um, so just, if you want to buy for your dependents, you just have to redo, you know, repurchase another plan to be able to cover them. So I think that has answered that question. And then somebody asks, um, I would be paying, um, would I be paying the insurance company every month for your video camera? Okay, he has left his email address. So maybe I would just respond to that because um, Casava doesn't do, we don't do gadget insurance. However, we can, um, you know, we can suggest to you, we can help you get all the information that you need, you know, to ensure that you're able to do this. And then somebody also asks this, I think this goes to Anne, how they can invest and, you know, what's the mode of payments would be after investments. Do they have to do it monthly? Would they have to do it yearly or, and what exactly the kind of investment that they would like to do? I don't know if Anne, you'd like to take that. So I'll just give a high level response because I think we sort of run out of time. Yes. Um, okay, so what sorts of investments can you do? There are several, there are fixed deposits with your bank, there are investments in treasury bills. The treasury bills rates just came out 12% for one year. But if you're not an experienced investor, I'd say turn to the mutual funds. Mutual funds are managed by specialists and they cover the short term medium term and long term. So it's easier for you to just speak to an advisor in an asset management firm and then let them guide you on which of the mutual funds you can invest in. And then you can go to sleep knowing that, okay, there are experts managing this for me. Thank you. 
All right, thanks so much. Um, so I think there is a survey that is gonna go, go out after the webinar and you know there are places there for people to impute in case they want more information on some of these um, key aspects of um, personal finance. So I think that if you're able to put your email address there, I'm sure Anne will be very capable you know, to reach out to you and give you all the information that you need. So please just take out a little bit of time a minute or two to fill out the survey that will be coming up after this. Um, someone also asked, what's the minimum amount that the microinsurance, you know, um, I think can give out? So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming what the person meant is what the minimum amount is for um, a plan. Um, so I, I would say what I would say is that I think it depends on what sort of plan that you're buying. You know, each plan has its own different pricing and you know, all of that information is available on our website www.cassavamicroinsurance or cassava.com um, that's www.cassava.com right so if you need more information please visit our website and you'll see all the information for all the products that we currently have available and we're also rolling out a few new products by you know by december so it will be nice um, to see people who are very much interested. Also, the survey also has, you know, partitions where you can put in if you need us to reach out to you later on after this workshop. So thank you very much. Um, okay, I think somebody just put a last question. There. This is the last question. Um, any coverage for an organization or is this still individually purchased? Yes, definitely. We have um, businesses that we insure. So um, I think I would just put an email address here that you can just, or you can just send us your email address, please. And would have somebody from our, you know, partnership team reach out to you to tell you all the information that you need. But you can also find that information on our website if you'd like to go to our website. But yeah, we do have insurance policies covering a lot of organizations. Our insurance plans are really very affordable. So most people, most organizations, you know, try to use us because, you know, they're able to still provide the kind of value that they want if they were getting another plan that was a little bit more expensive than this. So um, I think this is the end of our session today. All we just want to say is that, you know, insurance is basically finding ways, what we're doing here is we're finding ways to provide you with a sort of, you know, protection that would just literally help you to triumph over different adversary because life is very unpredictable and you know things happen, bad things happen, but we will always be here, you know, to hold your hand while you try to regain your stance after whatever it is that has happened to you. So, in as much as we're all trying to strive to generate some sort of you know wealth or make income, you know, make money one way or the other. Let's remember that we need to find ways to protect all of these assets. Just in case something happens, you know that you have something that you can fall back on. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining this um, webinar session. We hope that we can see you on our next session, which is going to be next month. Um, so we'll put it out once we want to have a next session. And um, thank you so much, Anne. Thank you, Ayodili, for honoring our invitation. You're welcome. All right. Have a great day, everyone.